we're going to take a look at Almeric I of Jerusalem, who was born in 1136 and was king of Jerusalem from 1163 until his death in 1174. The following is a description from one of his close associates in life, Archbishop William of Tyre, a leading cleric in the Latin East. He bore with equanimity the curses and reproaches, which were often hurled against him, both in public and in private, even by low and contemptible persons, and concealed his feelings so well that it appeared as if he had not heard the thing said. The translator of this edition of William of Tyre, Professor E. A. Babcock, a foremost scholar of medieval history, added this note to the passage. This affords excellent evidence of the spirit of freedom which prevailed in the feudal kingdom of Jerusalem. Though some of the refinements of life in the East had been introduced, the ceremonial suppression of free speech, which prevailed in Eastern courts, had evidently not yet been adopted. William of Tyre also tells us that King Almeric had keen intellectual interests. Check out the following fascinating exchange between the king and Archbishop William, also to be found in William's Chronicle. I recall that he once summoned me in a friendly way to the citadel of Tyre, while he was suffering from a low fever there, which was, however, unattended by danger. During the hours of rest, and in the intervals which occur in intermittent fevers, I talked with him intimately on many subjects, and answered some of his questions, as well as the time permitted. In fact, he was much edified by our conversation. Among other questions which he put to me at that time, there was one which moved me greatly, first because the query was unusual, and the subject one that hardly admitted of discussion, for our universal faith taught it, and it handed it down as entitled to sincere belief. And secondly, because my heart was deeply wounded that an orthodox prince, the scion of orthodox ancestors, should entertain a doubt in regard to a fixed doctrine, and should question it in the depths of his heart. He asked me, in short, whether outside of the teachings of the Savior and the holy men who followed Christ, doctrines which he did not doubt, there was any way of proving by reliable and authoritative evidence that there was a future resurrection. Much agitated by the novelty of his query, I answered, The teaching of our Lord and Redeemer is sufficient, for, in many passages of the Gospel, he plainly teaches the future resurrection of the body. He promises that he will come as judge, to judge the quick and the dead, and the world with fire. To the elect, he says that he will give a kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. But the wicked shall be consigned to the eternal fire, which is prepared for the devil and his angels. The pious declarations of the holy apostles and patriarchs of the Old Testament suffice. To this he responded, I firmly believe all this, but I seek a reason whereby this can be proved to one who doubts these things and does not accept the doctrine of Christ and believe in a future resurrection and that there is another life after this death. I answered, Put yourself then in the place of a man so afflicted and let us try to ascertain something about this matter. It is well, he said. I then asked, You acknowledge that God is just. He answered, I acknowledge that nothing is more true. Then I continued, It is also just that good be repaid for good, and evil for evil. He replied, That is true. In this life, I went on, that does not often happen. For some good people suffer nothing but troubles and adversity in this world, while many evil persons rejoice in continual happiness, as the evidence of daily life teaches us. Again he answered, it is so. Then, I resumed, that will take place in another life, for it is impossible that God should not act justly. Therefore, there will be another life and a resurrection of this flesh, when all who have merited either good or evil in this life must receive their reward. To this he said, This seems to me good beyond measure. You have wrested all doubt from my heart. 
By these and similar conversations, his spirit was greatly refreshed.